Hello, everybody. Welcome to Make It Monday. I'm Amy and I'm Jim. Jim, and we're here to show you rope bowl. Well, not bowls, rope bunny coasters, kind of in the technique of doing rope bowls. So what do we got, James? We got some cute samples. Isn't that sweet? That's so sweet. Let's do let's hold it close. So this is made out of um, I'm gonna call it piping filler. Yeah, right. Piping filler. And um, Jim just laid little pieces of fabric down and kind of zigzagged over them as we went. This guy was made out of jute from the dollar store. And I put a little bit of fabric behind her ears. And this was a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. We tried a heavier cord. Right. So this is a little heavier cord, but those are buttons. And after we realized you can't set your cup of coffee, yeah. <laughs> the buttons, you'd probably have more of a mess than uh than what you really want to deal with. So a couple different options. So mm -hmm. let's start with different cords. So this is very simple. All you need is a zigzag sewing machine. Um, this is not hard, right? Anybody can do this. So this is five 30 seconds cable cord. And that is what made yeah, my cord. first one. This one, this little one. Yeah, that one. Okay, so this one, this cord is this bunny. Okay. And this cord is... 9 30 seconds so it's a little thicker this is almost like a drawstring for pants and so this is the heavier the heavier bunny mm -hmm. hi carol and one of the differences too is like when you're using the heavier cording it takes less because right, it's it, bigger it fills everything up exactly that's something to know franny all right so we have rope like regular clothesline so this is regular clothesline this is a little heavier um, but this is what we were making the bowls out of because yeah. it had a lot of weight to it. You really don't want to make a bowl out of this thin cording because it's very wimpy and it would never hold its shape. And then we have the jute, which came from the dollar store, buck and a quarter store, whatever you <laughs> want to call it now. So you may have some laying around the house, some old clothesline, something you want to try. So, um, every, you know, <laughs> And, and it, it amazes me because Jim does so much and is so incredibly amazing. And then I do something and Jim goes, oh, I've never done that. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I get all excited because Jim's never done that. Mm -hmm. So unbeknownst to me, Jim just- That was my first up, one. Right, so he makes his first one instantly and it's perfect, of course. So Jim goes, how did you start it? And I said, well, I just take the cord and I wind it real tight. So Jim goes, oh no. So this is a square of wash away sticky stabilizer, right? The kind that you move the back. If you're an embroiderer, you know what this is. And so when you remove the paper backing, it's sticky. It's a little mesh, like um, it just washes away. So you just dampen it and it goes, goes away. So the thought was we have to start with a inside curl. We'll start with this guy. And you want to cut the ends off? Sure. All right, we're, maybe we should switch cameras so they can see what do you think. All right, there we go. So when you start, you have to start with a very tight roll so you don't get the inside. And the first thing you see that happens is the thread starts to shred. You're also going to see my fingernails, which are four weeks past my manicure date because of the cruises and everything. So you're going to start with a tight scroll. And you're just going to keep rolling it and rolling it and rolling it. And then once you get it started, you're going to put it on the sticky inside the little sticky square and this holds it in place and I'm, I hate to tell it in front of his face but this is genius so and you just roll it enough to get started okay and and you would make sure you didn't have a lot of those frays and things hanging out so there's this piece right here this is what it looks like Jim trimmed away a little wash away I wouldn't even worry about that because it helped well my thought was that if it came up a little bit it might stick in the bottom of the foot Oh, that's see again. What do I what do I even go there? I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> so don't ask how many yards it takes because we never three yards. Jim says three yards. Two and a half to three yards. Of this, I measured. Of, of this <laughs> this thinner, of this thinner stuff, right? So yep. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my sewing machine up for a zigzag. But with about four and a half, and again, depending on your cord, right? Stitch length around two. You just want a normal zigzag. And you're going to start, and if you have a little awl or something, you can use that to, and again, I would not have all these little frays, but maybe it's going to look like a little cotton tail. 
that could be for the tail. It. Right. We decided we needed a tail, but didn't know what a pom pom. It. Anyway, so I'm going to start at the very beginning. Put my foot down. The idea is to zig on one side and zag on the other. Mm -hmm. Jim suggested a three step. I just do a two step. Oh, let's get the right way. Pivot. Oh, let me turn my pivot on. Sorry. And then you're going to scroll. I can see where it's sticking, Jim. So you're right. Oh, I hate God dang it. Did I say that twice at the same <laughs> yes, time? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you say it three times? I don't know. But you can see what's happening here is. And I'm pivoting with my needle on the outside because we're turning an outside corner technically. But this is all you're going to do. And you're going to keep going. And you're going to keep going to however big you want your coasters to be. So it's, it's, I like, I like making the rope bowls, especially when I feel like I want to sew something, but I don't want to get involved with patterns and cutting. I can just be a little creative. So you can see what's happening. The cord is just going around and around. And Jim, you talked about a three-step zigzag. Yeah. I can't remember why. For a different technique that we're not going to show today. Oh, different technique. That's right. Yeah. All right. So once you get it started, you can just take your hands and just start to manipulate it. This softer cord is maybe a little harder to um, to constantly turn, but the heavier jute really goes. All right. So let's see who's on here. We, what do we got going on? B. A lot of people checking out today, which is great. Um, and if you have any questions, now's the time to fire away. So you just want to keep it flat while you're sewing. And it's going to take a minute to do this because we picked the thinnest cord to demonstrate with, but you'll get the idea. I'm going to, I'm going to make a baby bunny. A baby bunny. So we're just zigzagging and turning and spinning. So you can see it's a very easy process. And I highly recommend, if you've never done it before, to use matching thread, top and bobbin, oh, yeah. because this will show. Now, when we do some of the rope bowls, like Sharon did a couple of amazing rope bowls where she used colored threads in different spots, and it really added a lot of detail. Mm. But then you know you're going to see that. So you just have to be. So you could maybe use your variegated thread. Variegated thread would be great, too, if you really wanted to see the detail. But if you want a purely white bunny or a brown bunny, then. And after it gets so big where you can keep your hands on it, it really goes quite easily. Now, I have a, a applique foot on, which has a little channel underneath of it. Um, I'm probably going to recommend you stick with your all-purpose foot. Your all-purpose foot is flat on the bottom. Now, this seems to be pulling a little bit. Um, Okay, so Cheryl Aloise asked the question, how do we add embroidery? Which is great because if they want to embroider the bunny face on here. Mm -hmm. Basically what you're gonna do, um, Cheryl, is you're gonna stick this on wash away sticky paper and you're just gonna embroider it. And so super, super dense embroidery is kind of hard, but something with just a normal fill is great. And yeah. then- And if you put the same color thread in your bobbin, it's reversible. So- Those are embroidered. Machine, machine. Yeah, I just used so like, not sewing machine embroidered. It was like the satin stitch element that was on my machine. Oh, well, duh, here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do that. So those were satin stitches built into the machine. Right, right. So he just went over the uh, ovals a couple times in black thread, matching top and bobbin, and then the the little pink nose is just a little chunk of, of fabric. Yep. And so all he did was take a chunk of fabric. And as he was stitching, he just stitched over the fabric mm -hmm. and just incorporated it. Yeah. Right. All right. Perfect. Okay. So you're going to start with your sticky paper, doing all kinds of things. Hey, Suzette. She's one of our cruisers. I, I'm meeting with the, with the guys tomorrow for the dates in January. And if you guys are scanning cut fans, you're going to want to come on this cruise. We're doing a scanning cut masterclass. And so myself, Becky Thompson, and um, Anthony from Sour Grapes is going to be there. So it's going to be all about scan and cut software, cutting, pasting, making, doing. So it is going to be fun. I don't have the exact dates yet. 
something. Maybe it's February. I don't know what dates we're going. I think it's January. Anyhow. Hello, Gian. All right. So when you get your circle big enough, we got to do the ears, right? Yeah. So all you're going to do is take, take a little bit of, take a little bit, and you're going to make your ear, and I'm going to push that rope right up against kind of as close as we can get. Now here is okay to backstitch a little bit. Kind of right where you stopped and started and then do your other ear. So this takes a little bit of finesse to, you know, keep it tucked in there. These may not be perfect. I'm going to see if I can go for three. What I used was the throw plate on the machine as a guide. So I knew how far I could have the loop go out. So both ears are the same length. And my ears are unusually strange because I don't measure it. <laughs> and then, you can, you know, you just kind of keep building out. Now, if you want to, you could do double ears, right? Yeah. You could just follow your last ear. Which would make them stand out more. Which would more. make them stiffen up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to like the double ears, I think. But you can see once the zigzag kind of grabs it, it just does it itself. We aren't working real hard here. And this is where you want to make sure it's nice and tight up against the head. Look at that. Who knows? I had rope skills. <laughs> but you can do this with all kinds of things. Paracord. As long as your machine can stitch through it, right? This is just mm -hmm. a regular 8012 needle in here. There's nothing outrageous. Now, if I did switch to paracord, which has gorgeous colors, right? I probably would maybe stretch this and put a maybe a 90 in there. If you're using okay. that heavy repelling cord or yeah. something like that. So now when you go to end, all right, Jim, tell them how. <laughs> so <laughs> here's how Amy ends. And I'm just gonna let this sit here and let Jim finish. Amy just Cuts it off, cuts it off at the bottom. I zigzag back and forth over the end, and I'm done. So Jim's gonna do it Jim's way. So let's trade oh, spaces. Oh, I'm gonna trade. Okay. Well, it's okay. Jim, okay. Jim's extra, so we're gonna make sure you get the extra version as well. So okay. I'll, I'll talk about. So this is like how I did too. You just cut it off, and then you right. just zigzag over the edge, and that was it. Okay. I was like a little bit. I'm not gonna use All the right. word. That's but okay. I kind of went out here and took, kind of on twisted and cut one people can't see past your knuckles but here we go went and cut one of the strands out and pulled it out you still can't see here we go okay pulled out one of the strands like that and then went ahead and zigzagged a little bit and then went down and cut out oops another one oh lordy well there's four strands so let's let it unwind a little bit. This way it, it allowed it to do a smooth taper into nothing. A little narrow, right? Yeah. So you, it's really obvious on my jute one that there's a chunk at his neck. So you could put a bow there. You could put a bow tie there. But Edda, we had a question. So let's do the question first. So the question is, um, would it help to heat the end of the cords? There's no threads at the end. I know you want to work with ribbons you heat the edges melted i would not put a flame to cotton cord no it'll, <laughs> it, it, it'll burn it'll burn it'll catch on fire but the nylon stuff you probably could um but what we talked about is the piece of the um wash away if like like where i made kind of made a mess so if you took a piece of the wash away mm -hmm. while jim's doing his thing just trimming a little bit if you took a piece of this wash away and I just rolled my cord inside of that to capture all those funky threads. Right. And then yeah. I would just start that in because this is going to wash away. And once your stitches are on board, it's going to be some. So show them what happens when Amy does live. Right. We have a very floppy bunny and um he's kind of cool. sad looking so but, look, but the but the mine kind of blend right into yes the edge. you his blended right in amy's made a chunk at the bottom so you do you yeah right that's the theme of amy is you do you and then if you want to you can take little chunks put some hot glue 
I'm going to go, I'm going to go over the others. I'm going to go over here. Okay. That'll help. They can see everything then. Or overhead. We can clean up everything, but. You're good. All right. So you can run some hot glue around it, put the fabric behind it, and then just trim it. And this is not trimmed very nicely. This was, I was here working by myself and I was in a mood. I just have to say that I was in a mood. So here is. Here is the one with the stitched eyes. You have little satin balls inside your sewing machine. You did that a couple times, right, Jim, just to make it dense enough? Yeah. Yeah. And then a little chunk of fabric for her nose. And then this is a little bigger, little bigger version. But I mm -hmm. think those, those are super cute. They make a nice. Because um, yeah, you can make it bigger if you want to have like a teapot or something on your table. Right. You, I mean, you can yeah. keep going. I mean, yeah. You could just make this as ginormous as you want. And there it is. We just tie a little ribbon around the one side of the ear. You could put a bow tie in the bottom if it was a boy bunny. And um, that's it. So this is, we talked about the wash away, right? So this is that wash away sticky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's usually called sticky plus or wash away plus if it has a sticky. Um, this is OESD, which is one of our favorite stabilizers, but you can. Um, There's all different kinds out there. Can, can grab your own. This is. Um, this is Wright's cord. I don't like this with the scrim on it. This is not going to hold up. No, it won't. It won't hold It'll up. It'll just disintegrate. So if you have some of this, this cotton filler cord that just has the scrim, it's okay to practice with, but you want something that's finished. Right? Yeah. So that's it. Like a or, good cable cord. Right. And the jute is from the... Um, Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree General Dollar Tree. Yeah. Yeah. The buck and the quarter tree. So I notice around here they're taking all their names off. <laughs> or five and above. Right? Five and above. I know that's a different story with Gage. But you're fine. I um. Let's back see. to one. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and go back to one. So anyhow, so that is your bunnies. Let's see if we have any other questions. So hi Sam. Sam I see. Was that rope? Let me get the sort of question. What is the rope designation? I've never seen that look before. Oh, you mean because of the twist, maybe? I don't know. I'm not trying to understand the question, honey, but it's um, it's just piping cord filler, if that was the question. Yeah, these are, should we say? 100% cotton, mm -hmm. right? But you can make it out of nylon. You can make it out of anything. Yeah, any kind of rope. Right. And yeah. Etta was on our, on our last cruises. She's from Hawaii. <laughs> she brought me two boxes of chocolate-covered macadamia nuts. And I'm in my state room by myself. Ed's gone. And you didn't share. I didn't. I did. I gave some to the kids, right? And so I did share. But I'm laying in bed going, dang you, Ed. These things are amazing. <laughs> Eating chocolate all by myself in my state room, which is, which is fine. I truly appreciated it. She was so sweet. And let's see. What else? We got any other questions? Um, Sam, let's see. That was very cute. I think they liked it. And Marianne says, how do you make it into a bowl? Well, that's that's kind of a different animal. But I, I mean, I don't know how many people want to sit and stare at me make a bowl. We could. But it's basically you're using it. You're kind of pulling on it. So it does yeah, do it. We have one that start. There's that little one that was that we started that was. So anyhow, what you do, Marianne, is as you start to. Actually, hit me one of the bunnies. It's almost done. The one is done. It's the plain one. So what happens, it's just your hands forming everything. So as I'm going um, going around in circles, right? As I'm going around in circles, I am turning. Oh, let me form it. it. I am bending it as I'm going. And I'm pulling on the cord just a little bit. So as I'm spinning it and doing it, I just keep forming it. Forming it. And, you can, it. and you can see it's already holding a bowl shape. But if yeah. you have a little, uh, I mean, the tiniest of bit of tension as you're going around, yeah. it'll automatically draw that up into um, a nice bowl. Do we have that class? I know Reen from Embroidery Garden does um, has a couple bowl classes mm -hmm. that she's done. And I don't know if I have one on YouTube or not. That was... Um, and I guess it's, if you got to, We've been it for a couple of years, if you're making a bigger bowl, I guess if you had your free arm open that you can lay it on that. So that way the bowl can shape around the free arm kind of. I bend mine up around the machine okay. and I'll bend it down, but that's um, personal preference, personal preference. Yeah. So 
uh, yeah, the sticky paper is a good hint for you doing anything. Like we need to get something started. You mm -hmm. don't have 12 fingers to, yeah. to do. And fingers. you don't want your fingers to get into the needle Jesus. area. Yeah. So thank you, bunny. So the bunnies are, thank you, Natalie. The bunnies are too cute. That's fine. That's good. And the stabilizers, of course, will wash out too later on. So you won't see it. Yeah. The rope bowls, I do like the clothesline. And it's very hard to find. The clothesline we have now is really thick. I mean, that really is, you really have to have a very yeah, good machine. Really I threw it down here. <laughs> yeah. You really have to have a solid machine to go, go through that. Yeah. Sharon and I made one. So, um, hang on. You talk to Jim for a minute. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go grab it. Uh -oh. Make stuff up, Jim. <laughs> Tell him a joke or something. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, we could show them what we're using the piping cord. Where's our surgery pillow at? It's up it's front. front. Okay. Yes. Yeah, everything's up front. Yeah. We're not planning for that yet. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Thank you. Carol likes the bunnies too. Um, oh, one thing too, when you're working with this, this was a cotton cord that we worked with and I thought it was like kind of smoother to work with. You could use like the nylons of polyester. And when it gets to the end, you could use um, any kind of like heating tool, whatever to kind of taper the cord. That'll also help keep it from fraying, but that's only if it's like a polyester nylon type. When you're working with the cotton, you do have to cut them. And then if you saw me, whenever I did it, I backed over it again, just to kind of over stitch the uh, edge of the cording. So it was, it was coming back. I went over it just to help the clean finish the edges of it. So it's kind of like back stitching that way. Look, the bunnies, seems like everybody likes the bunnies. Um, maybe this is my time to do a commercial. If you like the class, um, Check out my schedule if you go to the sewingexpo.com. I do travel and teach with the Original Sewing Expo, and classes are filling up, so you can check out my schedule there. And okay. Amy's back. I'm back. Yay. The store is awful big to be run from, <laughs> one, from one end to the we other. Need, we need segues. Whew. I'm just glad people stick with this, right? <laughs> so this is, this is a rope bowl here, right? And Sharon actually made this. She dyed the... the um, rope right the clothesline and then put a solid piece of fabric in the bottom this is a good hint if you stink at the stop and start okay right i mean like you just fuse some fabric in there and then we talked about the different threads if you look at the bottom look how different that looks using a variegated thread that turned out great right and then when she finished it she just squirreled up some knots mm -hmm. and left a tail on both sides kind of make a little scoop they kind of organically just develop into their yeah. own their it's own sculpture thing. yeah so it's absolutely um great and then the piping cord oh the piping i think you closed this down. did i just disconnect this hold on hold on oh there we oh my gosh i bumped the <laughs> mouse i thought i turned this off i scared me and then this is what we're doing with the piping cord this is our serger project for the um, surger, box. surger power surger box yeah. subscription box and the embroidery is optional, but it's a great platform. And then um, there's an insert for cover stitching. If you have a cover stitch machine, but anyhow, we're going to do ruching, piping, gathering, seaming, everything mm -hmm. on your serger um, that's coming up. And then the scan and cut uh, tomorrow night is scan and cut live box opening the 14th Valentine's day. You're spending it with me. Um, we're doing a bicycle on a beach tote with cork and vinyl and fabric. So that's our scan and cut project. You're going to be cutting three different substrates and then it goes on a bag. Here's the bag. So everybody got a bag in their kit and I think that's it. We're doing, <laughs> we're doing other things. So, um, Amy sews, if you want to get on the wait list, Amy sews.com to get on the wait list for the scan and cut box and yeah. the serger box. And they are growing nicely, which mm -hmm. I am grateful for. And um, anyhow, let's see if anybody has any other any other questions. You know, Franny, Franny I did these um, these little. The, I posted this little bunny, right? You saw a little picture, and I get a. I love Facebook Messenger because everybody is, seems anonymous on it, and she said that she doesn't celebrate Easter, mm -hmm. and and I, and I said, well, we really aren't celebrating Easter, we're celebrating bunnies. Yeah. And I said, I don't remember the bunnies being in the Bible, but anyhow, so she was just hating on me for doing bunnies. I don't know. People are driving me crazy. <laughs> so anyhow, so just don't, you know, 
Jim. <laughs> Jim's being silly. Anyway, okay, everybody. Well, thank you for joining in for Make It Mondays. We'll see you next Monday. Same bat yep. time, same Good bat, bat channel, <laughs> same bat station. All right. Have a terrific day because the more you know, the more you sell. Bye, everybody. Bye bye.